There are no concerns about how many likes I will get today. How many people will follow me? Or who will get cancelled on this silly thing called social media? It's a cute place. But I've left most of them behind. There's no way out here to repeatedly update your timeline or wanting to watch something new to waste your time. There's only one focus. Work. Out in wilderness, you only have a desire to focus on one thing at a time, which is an impossible task in the city. It feels like such an impossible task to live a simple life. It's like swimming for the first time. But if you keep trying, you ultimately get the flow of it. When you are out here in the middle of nowhere, just by yourself and maybe close friends, you tend to forget the world exists. You tend to forget this rain of world upon you. In a place like this, you truly question what you do. Am I really an IT professional, a banker, or even a media influencer? What does it really mean? What do those things do to me? Why do those things matter so much? It matters because that is all we know. The garbage of the modern world indoctrinated from childhood. At one point you have to slowly shovel that garbage out of your life. It's not too often I get to see myself preparing everything for a meal. But out here, it's not only a necessity, but a therapy. And of course, as an Indian, you can't be too far away from your spices and masalas. Cooking on a raw fire is not a science, but an ancient art, requiring mastery of when to do and how to do it and how you control heat. I can truly say everything that is done in wild. Even cutting off onion feels so satisfying to the mind. If you could only taste the smell of raw fire and all these ingredients, there's no match for cooking the way cooking is supposed to be done. That cinnamon, cardamom, and smell of mustard oil never smelled so good before. I can't think of a time in daily life or at least my daily work life in a big city when I was as happy as I am now.
Getting out in nature time to time is like a deep tissue massage for your mind and spirit. It becomes a necessity in this modern world. I just dropped my spoon on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Problem. Oh man, how to eat it? We're eating fish. Hmm. Why is that? What is opposite? What, what nakshatra is it today? Punar Vasu. So, opposite was Purvashala. Water. Ocean, water, yeah, water food. We're eating water food. This is actually the best fish curry I've made so far, ever. Really? Mm hmm. And it's funny. It's Punar Basan and And very here we are back at the cabin again. Returning back. Yeah. Ram Lakshman coming back to Ayodhya. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, you mentioned, you know, Ram's Nakshatra is Punavasu. Oh, Ram Nakshatra Punavasu, yeah. So, who's Ram? Me or you? I am Ram. Ram's the one with the crown. I got the crown on. Ram is the eldest one. Yeah. You are elder. I know. It's funny to think about it, but I am. I keep getting cardamoms. Yeah. Seriously, I cannot believe this came out so good. And I didn't even have Ginger, not ginger, I mean, uh, the chili but powder. Ginger, right? Yeah. What did you use instead of chili powder? Uh, the whole, whole chilies. Yeah. Look at how bright the sky is. The joy and peace of being alone cannot be defined by wonderfully edited movie scenes, music or narration. It's like the feeling of enlightenment. It cannot be talked about, described or spoken of. It's only understood with absolute experience. There's a mystical aura about being alone in complete wilderness surrounded by trees, rivers, mountains, it just cannot be replaced. Even if you live in a high rise in New York, it's nothing compared to the peace and joy you get in arms of nature.
still nice. That's what we're missing. Even out here, the responsibilities of the world don't escape you. But I wouldn't have it any other way. If I can use technology in balance with nature, I'm all for it. As an astrologer, you can't ask for anything more perfect. The ability to use your intuition and knowledge as you try to sink in with the high definition signal of nature. But there are often times when your intuition can seep through what the chart of the individual is trying to say. In such times, I always take a break and walk away. Seeking the answers in a break brings upon about other mental gymnastics of life. What time am I living under? Why am I living in first place? And the purpose of me when breathing circulates the mind. There are different days and moments when planets refuse to talk to me, refuse to guide the person through me. Maybe it's their karma or mine, but still I try. I have to, because if I don't, it'll be like a tick in my brain, eating me alive. Sitting in solitude on earth and observing whatever comes in front of you somehow always helps me extract the juice of intuition I need. I do know the answer will come. In the meantime, you just take a quick nap. At an old age as mine, a person like me doesn't regret a thing I haven't done. Like climbing mountains, world tour, going on a safari. Or things I may not have been able to do which are considered by society a bucket list. For me, the only focus now is to burn the karma of past life so I can move on and not turn back on this plane again. That's all I might regret if I was to leave the body filled with my karmic baggage. That's when words of my Guru, Yogananda, are most important to remind me to focus on Kriya Yoga. Kriya the only path I know that can help me move on and merge with thee. But I do know that any type of activity when done with love can bring about absolute God realization. The only question is how much patience you have. Doing some chores around the cabin keeps the body and mind occupied which can be very good antidote to a mind hitting blanks at a problem.
and if answers to your problems still proceed then good old Cuban cigars definitely helps at least me Meditation in complete isolation of the world is far more potent than the one in your dwelling in the middle of the chaotic city. But when you are asleep, out in the middle of nowhere. It clicks and the answer comes. One of the most exciting things about living in a place with no light pollution is the ability to see a clear starry night like you would never in the city of lights. So you're saying it should go like that? Yes. It becomes like a day of ritual okay. and celebration, putting together your telescope just so you can view the little twinkling stars at night. Even though you know you will not get the clearest view of any of the stars. But it's the nostalgia of being a kid that makes you put together a toy that may not be the best one out there in the world. Okay, so this is okay, that is east west and that is Yeah, this is one hell of a manual telescope. But it's good at least to learn. Yeah, and then it should have that thing to put the cell phone on the side.
right there. That's the boat. And the boat goes from there all the way till there. Then where's your home? Well, this is our home. No, the guy's home. Well, the guy home is probably on the mountain. Jake. Now they say if you want to see that, the next chance is at around 5 mile deep. Morning. What, what are the chances of us seeing even the satellites? Chogi, what got you into this? Which astronomy? Mm -hmm. I, that's a question which many people ask me and I always say, I don't know, I was interested right from my childhood. Really? It must be coming from me like last life, past life. Oh, something just went past by. I just saw something pass by, probably a satellite. Oh. <laughs>